Hello everyone, I'm Satyajit Patnaik and welcome back to my channel. You're watching the Dimensional Tail Reduction series and today's video is on Linear Discriminant Analysis, which is also known as LDA. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified on my future videos. Let's get started. In the previous video, we talked about uh, PCA, uh, Principal Component Analysis. We tried to understand the basic theory behind the PCA, what is the mathematics behind PCA, and also I showed you a, a little bit of code as well, but yeah. Uh, after the LDA session is done, the LDA part is done, once we have a clear understanding on PCA and LDA, which are actually very similar to each other, once that is done, in the very next video, uh, I will also be sharing you one of the use cases where we will have, a, we, we will do a hands-on coding, hands-on practical sessions on each one of them. Uh, maybe we'll pick one of the classification problems and we'll try to implement PCA and LDA and we'll see which one is actually performing better. Okay, now let's quickly jump on to today's topic. Let's not get deviated or get, you know, uh, go into a different direction. Now LDA, quickly we'll start. LDA is like PCA, but it focuses on maximizing separability among known categories. If you look at this particular uh, image, you can see that principal component analysis is only taking into consideration your X variables. In the, in the previous classes also, in the previous PCA classes also, when we were taking examples and when we were showing you the code as well, PCA only considers the X variables. It doesn't consider your Y variables. LDA, in other hand, apart from the X variables, it also considers Y variables while performing the LDA processes or you can say the transformation techniques. Okay, so that is only difference between LDA and PCA. Apart from that, uh, there are some minor differences as well. Let's try to see what are the differences between LD and PCA. As I told, apart from finding the component axis, with LD, we are interested in axis that maximizes the separation between multiple classes. LDA is supervised because it relates to the Y variable or you can call it as the dependent variable, right? Let's quickly jump on to our uh, paintbrush and try, try to understand what exactly is the drawbacks of directly converting a data from a n dimension to a lower dimension space. So let me take an example of a two dimensional space. This is a two dimensional graph, right? Let's say these are my class one variables, class one, class one, and these are my class two variables. Something like that. Now, if I just randomly transfer the, uh, transform this data to one dimension space, let's say I'm transferring it to the X, dim X uh, axis. Okay, so definitely I will take like which point it is falling on X axis, right? So I'll take the perpendicular from these points to the X axis. So let's draw it 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2. There will be some 1s here, 2, 2, right? So the only option, only problem here is that we are simply ignoring one of the axes, right? When we are transforming a data from a two dimension space to one dimension space, that means here we have directly transformed into a X, X space, right? So we are ignoring the Y axis. So we could, we, there are possibilities that we might lose some useful information. Likewise, if we project this data on Y axis and now if I show you the new axis and I'll show you, okay, this is class one, this is class two, something like that. So we are ignoring this axis, right? So again, on the, like it, it's, it's going to be the same. We might lose some information when we are directly converting to a, from a two dimension space to a one dimension space. Similarly, when it comes to N dimensional space to N, N minus K dimensional space, the concept remains same, right? So that is where your, the LDA techniques comes into uh, the, the, the picture. So LDA, the main objective in LDA is to project the data on a new axis in a way that maximize the separation of two categories. Now, what does that mean? Now let's consider class one. So here is my class one. Let's say this is my class one. So what will be the mean value of this? Let's say the mean value is here. This is mu one. Okay. 
and this is my class 2 so the mean value will be here okay so in lda one of the uh, i would say one of the assumptions is that we have to work on this way <coughs> so that our we we can maximize the distance between the mean values okay so now what does that mean if i do m mu1 minus mu2 and let's say this is d so i should always focus for increasing the value of t now you can take a modulus of that okay mu1 minus mu2 is equals to d so my first focus is to increase the value of t first step increase the value of t or you can say in maximize the distance between the mean values second step these are the assumptions of lda okay this is how lda works second step minimizing the variation now what is variation lda calls scatter and represented by a square okay now if i just talk about this particular mu1 minus mu2 square s1 square plus s2 square so our main motive is to increase the numerator and de decrease the denominator or you can say this value should be ideally very small and this value should be ideally very large now we are performing square operation mu1 minus mu2 square because square values are used squared values are used to get the positive values right now let's take a small example because uh, you know only when we take an example and show you then only it will be like you you can clear most of the doubts so let me take a small example now in lda i i'm going to take an example so our our question is let's say we have to project a feature space like n dimensional feature space to a smaller subspace of k and k has to be less than n minus 1 for sure less than equals to n minus 1 while maintaining the class uh, discriminatory ratio or you can say discriminatory information okay so i'll take two different uh, samples c1 and c2 now as i told in pca we were just like the example which we talked about it just had my x variables right it just had, just had v1 and v2 right here we also consider my y variables we also consider y variables that's the reason we have two different inputs or you can say two different samples sample 1 of class 1 and sample 2 of class 2 okay so in class 1 let's say i have these samples for one Two four, two three, three six, and four four. In class two, these are the samples: nine ten, six eight, nine five, eight seven, ten eight. Okay. So these are my two different classes, and these are my sample values. So here, my step one is step one. Calculate the mean values. Okay. Calculate the mean values. That means mu one and mu two. So what is mu one? Mu one is nothing but four plus two six plus two eight plus three eleven plus four fifteen. 15 by 5 3 1 plus 4 5 8 14 18 18 by 5 3.6 this is my mu 1 and this is my mu 2 mu 2 will be 9 plus 6 15 24 32 42 42 by 5 8.4 and this one is 10 plus 18 23 30 38 38 by 5 7.6 okay so my uh, but my step one is going to be calculation of mean values. Our next step, step two, is calculating the within the class, within the class, maybe I'll, draw, I'll write it down in black, within the class scatter matrix. Okay, now what is that? I'll talk slowly. After this, the fourth step will be, let me write down the steps first, step three, and then I will write step four. Okay, 
my step 3 is nothing but in between sorry in between the class scatter matrix okay this is also represented by sb and once that is done the fourth step is nothing but calculating the projection vector projection vector and this vector has to be like obviously we are going towards that direction where we want to focus on in increasing the mean values right increasing the distance between the both the mean values okay like increasing the class separability right so we'll try to understand let me open another paint file so the step 2 is nothing but we have to calculate the within the class scatter matrix now what is that this is denoted by sw sw is nothing but s1 plus s2 now s2 is covariance matrix of class 1 this is covariance matrix of class 2 now what is covariance matrix in the last class we already talked about that if you are not clear with the covariance matrix you can go back to the previous class in the pca uh, i have already done a very good explanation and you know mathematically also i showed you what exactly covariance matrix is now sw is nothing but as we have two classes it's s1 plus s2 if you have more number of classes instead of binary classification if it is 10 classes if you have 10 classes that means 10 y variables so it will be s1 plus s2 plus s3 plus s4 till s10 okay now the formula of s1 is x minus mu1 multiplied with x minus mu1 transpose similarly s2 is nothing but x minus mu2 multiplied with x minus mu2 transpose okay so let's try to calculate that before that let's try to find x minus mu1 what is x minus mu1 going back to the previous slide this is my x value and this is my mu1 value so 4 minus 3 is 1 1 minus 3.6 is minus 2.6 okay 2 minus 3 is minus 1 4 minus 3.6 is 0 0.4 third element 2 minus 3 is minus 1 3 minus 3.6 is minus 0 0.6 similarly i'll calculate 3 minus 3 is 0 6 minus 3.6 is 2.4 4 minus uh, 3 is 1 4 minus 3.6 is 0 0.4 okay these are my five values x minus mu1 okay so for each one of them what we need to do is we need to calculate the s1 value like the x1 x minus mu1 into x minus mu2 uh, mu1 transpose okay so let's calculate x minus mu1 x minus mu1 transpose for first element okay <laughs> so what is that 1 minus 2.6 multiplied with 1 minus 2.6 okay so this is how the transpose works right so this is nothing but this is a 2 cross 1 matrix okay let me do it in reds this is a 2 cross 1 matrix and this is a 1 cross 2 matrix so our output will be a 2 cross 2 matrix right so what will be the output 1 into 1 1 minus 2.6 into 1 minus 2.6 minus 2.6 and 2.6 into 2.6 26 square is 520 576 sorry 26 square is 676 so it will be 6.76 okay similarly you have to calculate for the second element what will be the value minus 1 0 0.4 multiplied with minus 1 0 0.4 what is the value minus 1 1 minus uh, minus 1 into minus 1 1 minus 0 0.4 minus 0 0.4 0 0.16 okay similarly for 3 minus 1 0 0.6 minus 1 0 0.6 it will be minus 1 1 1 0 
minus 0 0.6 minus 0 0.6 0 0.36 okay similarly i'll calculate for element number 4 let me do it here itself okay element number 4 is nothing but this one right 0 0.24 0 2.4 right 0 2.4 and 0 2 point, sorry 0 2.4 is equals to 0 into 0, 0, 0 into 0, 0, 0, 2.4 into 2.4, 24 square is uh, 576. Okay, and fifth element is 1, 0 0.4. So 1, 0 0.4, 1, 0 0.4. This is nothing but 1, 0 0.4, 0 0.4. 0 0.16 okay so what will be the value of s1 it will be the cumulative value of all these elements right so let's just add these values first like i'm just adding the first element 1 1 2 3 and 4 so it is 4 minus 2.6 minus 0.4 minus 3 minus 3.6 sorry uh sorry this is minus 0.6 Right, right so this will be plus plus okay so second element minus 2.6 minus 4 let me just do it this way yeah minus 2.6 and minus 4 minus 3 minus 3.6 minus 2.4 minus 2 okay this is minus 2 again this is minus 2 this is 4 and the last element 6.76 plus this plus this plus this plus this 6.76 plus 0.16 uh, okay plus 0.36 uh, then 5.76 okay this is 13.2 okay now you have to take the average of it five elements so the final output will be 0 0.8 0 0.4 minus 0 0.4 and uh, 2.6 okay let me just zoom in because that uh, that helps me actually so this is how this is how s1 is calculated i hope you are clear with it how s1 is calculated very similarly you have to perform the same steps for s2 now i'll just write it down instead of calculating it s2 is found out to be like this 1.84 minus 0 0.04 minus 0 0.04 and 2.64 there can be some mathematical uh, calculation mistakes so forgive me for that but yeah just try to understand the basics the the calculations how the formulas are uh, done and all those things okay minor calculations uh, mistakes are allowed okay so s1 and s2 are calculated now my final value which is my sw is nothing but s1 plus s2 now if i just add it this plus this 0.8 plus 1.84 is 2.64 minus 0.4 minus 0.4 minus 0 0.44 similarly minus 0 0.44 and this one is 5.24 okay so this is my within the within the class scatter matrix value okay now let's move ahead to the step number three okay this we got it let's move to the step number three which is my in between the class scatter matrix so for that i'll create another paint so this is my step three right if i'm not wrong step three so i have to calculate the between the class scatter matrix value which is also denoted by sb the formula is mu1 minus mu2 multiplied with mu1 minus mu2 transpose okay our ultimate goal is to increase the value of sb okay and decrease the value of sw now what is sb sb is nothing but the uh, when i was talking about the first graph i was talking about this thing right this value minus this value which is known as the distance this has to increase right the separability the class separability has to increase okay so this is this thing 
SB. Okay, so between the class scatter matrix, so we have to aim to increase the SB value. So what is SB? What is mu one minus mu or mu two? I already have the values written here. My mu one values. Okay, sorry, it is here. It is three, three point six. So mu one minus mu two is minus five point four and minus four. Right. So let me write it down. Minus five point four and minus four multiplied with minus five point four and minus four. Okay, again it's a two cross one into one cross two, so your output will be two cross two. So let me write it down: five point four into five point four. Let's take help of calculator. Fifty four into fifty four, twenty nine point one six. Five point four into four. Okay, twenty nine point one six and twenty one point six. It's my cursor. Okay, twenty nine point one six and twenty one point six. This is twenty one point six, and this is sixteen. Okay, so this is actually my between the class scatter matrix. Okay, as I told, the main intention is to increase this particular value, increase the SB value, and decrease the SW value. Okay. Now our next step is to find the projection vector. Now, what is the projection vector? Step four. Find the projection vector. Now I will mark projection vector as this e vector. The formula is S W to the power of minus one multiplied with mu one minus mu two. Now, what is S W to the power of minus one? What is S W? S W is by within the matrix value, right? Two point six four. Let me write it down first. Two point six four minus zero point four four minus zero point four four and five point two four. Five point two four. This To the power of minus one, that means the transpose multiplied with mu one minus mu two. What is mu one minus mu two? It is minus five point four into minus four. Okay. So what is the transpose value? What is matrix to the power of minus one? Now, if you just go back to Google, maybe you will find it out. But let me write it down. Let's say I have a matrix of A, B, C, and D. So, its transpose value will be one divided by A D minus B C into D minus C. Sorry, minus B minus C A. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, uh, one by A D minus B C into D minus B minus C D. Okay, so what will be this value? Let me take uh, the red. Paint again. This value is nothing but one divided by two point six four. Two point six four into five point two four minus zero point four four square multiplied with five point two four. So this is my D, right? Minus B zero point four four zero point four four two point six four. Okay. Multiplied with minus five point four minus four. Okay, let's keep this part aside. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to calculate this value. Uh, maybe I I'm not sure what exactly this value is. Let's calculate two point six four into five point two four, thirteen point eight three. Minus thirteen point eight three. So it's like thirteen point six. Now, if you just divide this value, thirteen point six three. Five point two four divided by thirteen point six three. Point three eight. Okay. So the the first value is point three eight. Zero point three eight. And similarly, you can calculate the other values. Uh, We have to divide thirteen point six three with all the values. Zero point four four divided by thirteen point six three. Zero point zero three. Zero point zero three. This will also be zero point zero three. This will be zero point something something. Two point six four minus thirteen point zero two. Sorry, what was that? Two point six four into five point two four. Thirteen point eight three. Point eight three, thirteen point six three, right? Thirteen point six three, thirteen point six three. Okay, zero point one nine. 
okay now this multiplied with minus 5.4 minus 4 now if you don't know matrix multiplication don't worry about it just google it out matrix multiplication uh, calculator you will definitely find two to three different links you can take help of those portals and try to get the answers of this okay now similarly i have also done that so this final output is going to be minus 2.17 and minus 0 0.92 okay now how it is done definitely you just have to go back to your basics and try to understand so it will be this multiplied with this and this multiplied with this right so this element is nothing but 0.38 into this plus this into this if you do that you will get this value and the second element is this into this plus this into this okay so this is my final output this is nothing but my projection vector now i already have my projection vector let's try to plot the graph and see how my data points looks like as i told just let's not just focus about uh like uh, let's let's try to i mean i don't have let, let's try to draw this no problem okay now let's go back to the second slide okay 4 1 let's try to point all my values in class the class 1 values in red 4 1 Let's say this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Let's draw this first. 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, something like this. Now let's draw 4, 1. How does 4, 1 looks like? Here, 2, 4, 2, 4, somewhere here, here, okay. 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, somewhere here, 3, 6, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Somewhere here. 4, 4. Somewhere here. And my second class. 9, 10. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9. Somewhere here. Okay. 6, 8. Somewhere here. Uh, it's not that correct, but yeah. 9, 5. Somewhere here. 8, 7. 8, 7, somewhere here, 10, 8, somewhere here. Okay, something like that. Now, these are my two different classes. And let's try to draw the projection vector. Now, projection vector is this one. So, let us let me draw this using uh, a green curse, uh, the green line. Minus 2.17, somewhere here, this particular line. And minus 0.92. So, just so somewhere here okay now if i draw a line from this point going through the center this is how it will look like and the other side okay and this is how it will look like now what we need to do is we need to project our points now, okay, if, if let's go back to the very first slide. In the very first slide, what we were doing is we were directly projecting it on a x-axis or a y-axis, right? Now, if you were projecting it on x-axis, we were losing some information of y-axis y and vice versa. So here, that was the main reason why we created a new axis, very similar to the PCA. In PC also, we were creating a new axis and then rotating the values, getting the best fit line. And obviously, the the line was the, the line which basically forms the x-axis later on. That was called as our PC1 component and the perpendicular value was called as the PC2 con component, right? Very similar to that, we have, we, have def we have got our final line. On this line, we have to do a projection of our points. So let's try to project this points here okay this is where the projection falls now projection means from that point to the line you have to draw a perpendicular uh, uh, perpendicular uh, uh, lines okay so this is where i am drawing it now you can see i'll just draw it in blue this this is my class one and this is my class two or you can call it vice versa this is my class one and this is my class two obviously it is 
<laughs> perfectly separable and yeah perfectly projectable as well and also we are not losing any information right so this is nothing called that thing but called as my feature vectors feature vectors of class 2 similarly these are my feature vectors of class 1 okay you can also call these points these points which are projected on the line as the set of scalar values of its one dimensional uh, space right similarly these are the points of the set of scalar values of the one dimensional space of class 1 right and this line is called as your projection vector okay so this is all about lda i hope you got an idea about like the basic idea at least about lda and also about pca now our next video will be live soon as well like like in couple of days i'll just uh, i'll just do it and publish it so that that will be a live practical present uh, practical uh, video so we shall be going through one of the use cases uh, maybe i'll pick a live use case or a live a problem statement which actually happens in in the real world in that live state live problem statement we'll try to implement pca and lda and see how the accuracy behaves how the model behaves is the model deteriorating is the accuracy diminishing and all those things so that's it for today's video i hope you enjoyed the the lda part maybe it was little bit a little bit more into the mathematics part but yeah i i hope you enjoy it please like share and subscribe among your friends and keep supporting and yeah let's let's wait for the next videos that's it thank you guys